Tucker's criminal law firm does more legal aid work than any other in Britain. Why did you go in the second time? I don't know, I don't even remember going in. I don't even know where the shop is. For more than 12 months, we've had unprecedented access to their lawyers and their clients. The most important question no, is, did you hammer. pick up a hammer? No, certainly not. The taxpayer spends more than a billion pounds every year on criminal legal aid. He hit me first because he, uh, he thought I was flirted with another guy. At a time when the legal system's under increasing scrutiny, this is how justice really works. I'm just looking for the place I was caught on CCTV having a cigarette. Ah right in front of me there, so I'll just take a quick look. Will Jenkins has just become a Tucker's client. According to the police, it had already been burgled twice prior to my arrival. Uh, I didn't touch anything or do anything. Just had a cig. And this is it. August the 9th, 2011. Rioters overrun the centre of Manchester. The police say Will Jenkins is one of them, and this is the shop he burgled. It's the first time, other than the CCTV, that I've seen this place. I've never been in other than that night. Police are alleging that I've burgled this shop. I have no recollection of being here. I was drunk. It holds no memories at all for me. I leave the shop, not touching anything. I then enter back in. I'm off camera for a few seconds only. And I come back. Still not touch anything, not stolen anything. I'm not a rioter. At no point on that day in question did I intend to go and burgle a shop or anything or steal any items whatsoever. Why did you go in the second time? I don't, know. I don't even remember going in. I don't even know where the shop is. You don't even remember going in the first time? No. However, by going in that shop, first time maybe curiosity, second time it's more than that. Mm -hmm. That's what they will say. Your, your choices are, Will, plead not guilty on the basis that you went in there, however, you didn't have the requisite intent to steal. The problem with that, and I'll be honest with you, Will, I'm not going to bullshit anyone. They've been finding people guilty of such cases of just being in Manchester that night, let alone being in the shop that was burgled, OK? Because they're saying reasonable-minded people would have got the hell out of there for their own safety, OK? What do you think I should do, in your professional opinion? Take it on. If you want, if you want an honest, uh, no messed about answer. Because you will be found guilty after, after trial and then you'll be getting a higher sentence, a significantly higher sentence than you would do. You know, I could have told him he was walking and, you know, go and book yourself on holiday, don't worry about anything, but then, you know, when the do-do hits the fan, rightly he'll come back to me and say, hey, you, you told me I'd be walking, I'm, I'm rotting away in strange ways now, you know. You, you can't give people false hopes, I don't think it's fair to do so. I'm 40 years old, from Liverpool, living in Manchester now. Um, joined the army when I was 17. Did a tour of Iraq, Gulf War One. 
which is pretty horrific. Went to Northern Ireland for three years. I left that, went to university, got to project management, got made redundant, left my wife, homeless, and here I am in Manchester. When I met Rob first, initially, he's a charming bloke, put you at ease, so I felt happy that I've got someone I can speak to and trust. He put on the line. He didn't f flannel anything or fluff it up. So I'm expecting worst case scenario. Anything less than that, pretty much won the lottery. Rob Martini is one of 136 lawyers working for Tucker's. I don't remember biting her in the head. They handle more than 10,000 cases a year, most of them funded by legal aid. We need shoplifters, we need repeat offenders. Well, you're the client. If you want me to do it, I'll do it. They earned £10 million in legal aid fees last year, but with legal aid being cut back, the firm's worried about its future. There's less cases and more firms, or the same amount of firms fighting for work, and you have to try and get a bit of a commercial advantage. Hearings, lighters and beer mats. Hence, we've got all our wonderful things, our Tucker's umbrellas, our Tucker's beer mats, which people find in pubs far and wide through uh, our country. All sorts of things. If it doesn't give us business, at least it creates jealousy amongst the other firms. Franklin Sinclair runs the firm's Manchester office. He himself brings in business in the most unlikely way for a lawyer. It's that time again. It's just after 10. It's Tucker Solicitors presents Law and Soul, the one you've been waiting for. On Peace FM. Lovely way to start, that's Copeland Green, Unconditional Love. And if you can love unconditionally, then you're lucky, I think. And what's today's show about? It's about domestic violence. It's a community radio station, covers South Central Manchester. Uh, it's a paid-for slot. The idea is to get publicity, get more clients. Good catchment area, obviously, for us. Also, I, I love doing the show. I used to be a disc jockey in the 80s, worked in the nightclubs, etc. And this, but this is the first time that I've actually done a proper radio show. Doobie dooby doo. Scrub baby doo. I know. Right, let's go see the client. A new client has showed up at Tucker's accused of fighting with his boyfriend in public. Paralegal Beth Summers is sent to get his details. He hit me first because he, uh, he thought I was flirting with another guy. Whilst you were out? Whilst we were out. OK. And then um, when the taxi ride back in our, where our apartment is, we started brawling out to the street. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so he was kind of getting the better of each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, unfortunately, I, Bit him in several places and he right, bit me. Okay. And we both had quite a few injuries. It's a relatively new relationship. Tim Eagle had previously been married. And do you have any children? Two. And do they live with you? They don't, no, they live with their mum. And but do you still see you there? I do, yes, on a regular basis. So how long have you two been together for? Seven months. Right. Um, everything usually okay up until that night, or...? Yeah, we've had some... We've had some arguments in between where it has resulted in calling the police. Who usually calls the police? Myself. It's usually yeah. calling the police. I'm 29 and he's only 19, so... Oh, I see. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, so he's only 19. All right, well, I'll walk you back upstairs. Um, and just make sure you're there tomorrow at it won't be me, no, it will be one of our solicitors. Yeah, no, that's fine. So, okay. you'll, we'll know who it is, who's going. Okay.
Asim Ali is assigned to the case. Hello, Tim. It's Mr Ali calling from Tucker Solicitors. I'm just out of court at the minute. How long are you going to be? OK, see you shortly. And you're just outside. All right, thanks. Thanks, bye. It is very annoying because you end up losing a lot of your day just waiting. Tim turns up with the boyfriend he's accused of brawling with. Morning. Morning. Tim. Tim. Yes. Hi, Tim. Mr. Ali, you OK? Yes, I'm fine. So let's just pop into court and then we'll take it from there. OK, yeah, that's fine. Tim's looking for work with the NHS, so he's keen to limit the damage. He's trying to get reduced to a caution, and uh, from what he's saying, I think that the likelihood of that is going to happen, yes. I found Tim to be quite a typical type of client. Alcohol seemed to be a feature in this case, as it is in a lot of other cases. It clearly didn't necessarily agree with him and didn't bring out the best in him. Tim eventually gets 40 hours community service and Tuckers expect never to see him again. <laughs> Stephen Stewart is one of Tucker's regular clients. He is notorious in his neighborhood for the night he stopped the traffic on a busy motorway. Things, things got to me and got a bit upset. I decided one night that I have my say, so I, I decided to do a, a peaceful protest. I actually climbed on top of the motorway bridge uh, with my quilt. But fortunately, they had to shut all the motorway down just in case I decided to do anything stupid like jump, which that wasn't my intention. His bridge protest over a dispute with social services earned him nine months probation and a course in thinking skills. But now he has another matter for lawyers Beth Summers and Claire Parrott to deal with, an assault on his ex-partner and a male lodger. Now, she states that uh, due to your drinking, yeah. um, that you've become violent um, and have been she says punching and kicking her, and there's no. numerous incidents. No, that's actually incorrect, that. Um, yeah, I've been moody. Um, like we've had arguments, but certainly no violence. She says that when she arrives back home, you're there, she went into the kitchen, and immediately you've started shouting, you're taking the f***ing piss, get out of the house. No. Um, no, she said to her that I needed to have a word in private. She said underneath uh, the area where you put the coats, she said she had a hammer there on the floor, a black-handled hammer. And she states that at this time, you've suddenly stormed um, into the kitchen, went up to the hammer, picked it up with your right hand, came over to her, lent her against the wall, um, and then with your left hand, grabbed her by the throat. No, I didn't do that. Um... But she's indicating she's in the living room, isn't she? It's immaterial. No. The question, yeah. obviously, the most important question yeah, is, did you hammer. pick up a hammer? No, certainly not. You've apparently started shouting and calling her a, a, a liar, saying she was having an affair. You've then said that you would put a tracker on her car so you could yeah. see where she went. There's already one on her. There is a tracker on her car? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Does she know that that's there? Yeah. Right. Also, any text messages or calls that she makes, it comes up on the computer. Right, well, She that's... knows about it, because um, I show her. This is the 22nd matter that Tuckers have handled for Stephen Stewart, most of them involving disorderly behaviour. I've known Claire and Beth for a, a long time. I get on well with them. I can phone them day or night, any concerns about the case or things in general. They're more like family. <laughs> so the worst is six months. That's the worst, yeah. Six and six. And you would do you would do half of that. Sometimes I speak to him like every day or every other day. 
Um, sometimes I speak to him at the weekend, or he gives me a text at the weekend, or leaves me a voicemail at night, or, you know. <laughs> right, bye, Stephen. Yep. See you tomorrow. See you, tomorrow. See you later. See you later. Bye. Take care. He's trying to say the argument's not about jealousy and etc. But then he said he, you know, he's put a tracker on the car. I may be trying to ask him that question. <laughs> the following month, the magistrates find Stephen Stewart guilty of assaulting his ex-partner and their lodger. He's later sentenced to a year's community order and 120 hours unpaid work. In the winter of 2011, Tucker's become involved in a case which horrifies Britain. I'll miss her anyway as a good friend. They'd snatched a bag with the money in. There has been a level of violence used. Clearly, Nellie's ended up on the floor, and as a result of those injuries, she's now sadly passed away. Nellie Geraghty was mugged in an Oldham alleyway. Her handbag contained the ashes of her late husband. She was found still clinging on to the strap. Two boys were seen near the alley. We went outside to do a bit more free running. My friend got uh, a call on his mobile phone off his mum and said, oh, there's police at the door. Uh, can you come home? And I came up with them and uh, uh, two policemen came in and uh, said, oh, you're under suspicion of a robbery. We got took in the cells. We got told to go to the, the desk. So I went to the desk and then uh, the, the, the duty officer person uh, told me that I'm under suspicion of murder. I didn't feel myself at all. I felt sick, angry, because of the police. They've got nothing on us, and they're blaming us for this. I was shocked to hear, like, an old woman has been mugged, because it's just, I won't really do anything like that. It's just, it's no point. Stephen's my rock. My husband's disabled. We've got two disabled kids. Stephen's the only one who's not other than me that's not disabled. It's my rock. And it was just like my wills fell apart. I will chop you both up into little bits. I'm going to find out where you both live and set your gaffes alight. I can't really walk around in my streets anymore. It's just people are like, all over Facebook, I've got death threats about, like, oh, uh, I'm going to burn you alive and stuff like that. So it's just, might as well just keep in cover. At first, Stephen is represented by a local duty solicitor, but his mother calls in Tuckers, and Michelle Seeger is on the case. A witness uh, said uh, that they've seen two um, boys leave the scene. And then um, we got uh, called, like said, like that we were near the scene. Right. So we got that. You got seen in 50 minutes before, didn't yeah. you? 50, 50, 50, oh, 50 yeah. Minutes 50, before. 50 minutes right. before. 50 minutes before. 50 minutes before. I think if people knew that, you know, actually it was just purely based on the fact that mm. kind of an hour before it all happened, you were near an area. We had um, eggs thrown out the window on the, on the Sunday after it all came out um, and we had people coming past shouting stuff and, and what, what's happened with school then have you have you been able to stay at um, the same school or like i've been off for like since it's been calming down now mm -hmm. and um, on this friday what's coming up um, i'm going in for the day and uh, not like, spending a day with them so. right so it'd be like a structured sort of day where yeah it's testing the water to see yeah. if he's going to be safe enough to go back yeah and See if it's going to be all right. Mm. So I said to him, I said, he's not going to be able to go up town for his dinner out like that. No. Because it's too dangerous. Mm. He, so he'll have to, when he goes there, stay in there, have his dinner in there, and then come home when he goes until it all proper calms down. Mm. All right, see you later. See you later. All right, bye-bye.
we're not entitled to see anything at this stage, so all I can do is support the family, liaise with the officer all the time, try and sort of push them and make sure that the, you know, they're aware that, the, that these lives are sort of like on hold um, until the case is finalised for them. from Tucker Solicitors. Um, hi, I'm in relation to a Tim Eagle that you've got with yourselves. As Christmas approaches, a familiar name appears on the office whiteboard. Tim Eagle, who Tucker's had helped three months earlier when he'd brawled with his boyfriend, has been arrested. He wants a lawyer to represent him at the police station. Lorna Wincott is the solicitor on call. Yet again, a fight with his boyfriend is at the heart of his problem. You're arrested at five o'clock this morning. You're on a curfew. I know. How many times have you breached your curfew? That'll be my second time. Right. All right, well, there's two allegations you have for. One's criminal damage and one's fraud. Uh, I'll start with the fraud because it's just the easy one. Do you know what this is about? You had a bus pass on you and you've made a significant statement. Basically, you've made a comment in custody um, and it's been recorded and the comment was, it's not mine, I found it, but I have been using it. Now, that's recorded as evidence now because it was when you were brought into custody. Can you remember making that comment? I can remember saying it too. Right, the other offence you've been arrested for is a criminal damage. Um, a bit more worries about this because this seems to be your thing when you and Kieran have a row and you, you're racking them up at the moment, aren't you? <laughs> Basically, you, you and Kieran go out, get drunk, have a row and something happens that you end up arrested or one or both of you. And what they're saying is you and Kieran staying at the Renaissance last night and gone out around 2.30 this morning. About 4.15, Kieran's come back to the hotel and he said to the staff, uh, you know my boyfriend, well, don't let him back in because he's been very aggressive towards me, he's punched me in the face. This is where things have gone wrong, because 20 minutes later, you've arrived, they're saying. I spoke to a member of staff who said, well, you can't come in at the moment, go outside and pho uh, phone uh, Kieran outside. Whilst you were outside, they've basically heard smashing glass and a window of a restaurant, which is essentially next door to the Renaissance, called Rustica, um, has been smashed. It turns out he failed to carry out his earlier community service order and has been punished with a suspended prison sentence. Lorna's worried this new offence will trigger the prison sentence, so she introduces Tim to the concept of the no-comment interview. So basically, I'm happy that you confirm who you are, where you live, and that you understand the caution and general prelim stuff. Anything about the actual offence, about your comment, the reason for your arrest, that's what I need you to reply no comment in relation to. And we're going to have a little practice of that. So the first thing she might say to you is, um, you've been arrested for criminal damage um, at whatever time this morning. Is that correct? Um. No comment. Correct. And then she might say, hey, you're arrested at five o'clock this morning, aren't you, aren't you meant to be on a curfew? No comment. Right. Can you confirm that when you were, came into custody, you said in relation to the bus pass, it's not mine, I found it, but I've been using it? Uh, no comment. Is it Kieran, is he your boyfriend? No comment. Right. Can you confirm what you look like? Uh, no comment. Um, you've got blonde hair, haven't you? No comment. Why won't you describe what you look like? <laughs> no comment. Are these your trainers? No comment. Is that your footprint? No comment. Right, OK, so all the way through. With Lorna's help, Tim gets bail. He's due in court within the week. Will Jenkins, the Gulf War veteran charged with burglary during the Manchester riots, is due in court. His case, like those of all the rioters, will be heard in the Crown Court, but first it has to pass through the magistrates, where his lawyer is Claire Parrott. She's sympathetic to his pleading not guilty. 
you're, you're maintaining that you didn't go in there with any with no any intention. intention. No. And in that case, you know, you, you really should pursue the matter to trial. We've discussed sentence. Um, I think it's looking likely that if you were convicted, you would get around two years custodial sentence. Uh, I'm not pleading guilty for something I haven't, I haven't done. Didn't no. Didn't steal anything. So. And you didn't intend to steal no, anything. I didn't. That that's that's the issue. Whether you intended to. Absolutely not. So. Most of Tucker's work is legally aided criminal law, but they also specialise in civil actions against the police. Junaid Mayat, a former fireman, is suing West Yorkshire police. He says four years ago they wrongfully arrested him, assaulted him and maliciously prosecuted him after he was stopped for a routine motoring inquiry. The police say Junaid was uncooperative and threatening. This officer's pinned me down. He's banging my head on the footpath. The other officer's jumped into the back. He's jumped on my back and he's punching me in my back. He dragged me up and then I'm leant over this wall with the handcuffs on, legs wide apart. Tuckers are going to represent him in court. Kieran Walsh is his solicitor. We've got to move on to the offer, really, haven't we? And discuss the offer. A week before the trial opens, the police offer £8,000 to settle the case. Kieran and barrister Hugh Barton need to get Junaid's response. I mean, I get the impression you want, you want, to, you want to see it, see it out in court, look it out. And the risk, the risk. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, no, yeah, I understand. Yeah. So, do I take it from that you don't want to accept the offer? Do I... Would you like to, to put forward a, an offer to...? I've got to call. Well, OK, you... I want understand to... the risk. Well, I understand all the no, advice no. you've given me. Yeah. I understand everything. But <clears throat> I'm telling the truth, and the truth always comes through. They've accused me of making death threats towards them and their families. Those allegations, I don't take lightly. I know you don't. Whether it's 60,000 or 160,000, I'd rather have my day in court and watch them, watch them answer, answer these questions. Right. OK, so our response is, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll wait and see if there's any, any reaction to that. Tuckers are fighting this case on a no-win, no-fee basis. If Junaid gets a big win, they'll benefit. If he loses, they don't get paid. In your life, this is a big moment for you. You know, I don't, you won't be involved in another case like this. And this, you know, it's not just a... Hopefully not. <laughs> you know, this, is, this, this is big and it can go disastrously wrong. So it, it, it can be devastating for you. We lose as well if you lose. We lose... So there's more reason not to lose then. <laughs> It'd have been nice if he'd given us a figure that we could go back to the other side with, but he, he obviously wants his day in court. He comes across well, and he always has when he's, he's spoken to me about the incident, and I believe him, that's, you know, I've got faith in him. But it's not me he's got to convince, it's, 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 it's the jury. Tim Eagle has a suspended prison sentence hanging over him. It could be triggered this morning. He's due in court in Warrington for breaching a curfew. It, they're quite minor offences, but... I had quite a, an easy punishment when we first met in Salford. It was just 40 hours, but unfortunately, it's hard to keep... It's not hard to keep them, but it's hard to get out of bed in the morning and go work for free. <laughs> um, so I didn't uh, stick to those, and so then, unfortunately, I committed another offence in Manchester City Centre. But I really don't want to go to prison, because I've got two children, too, and I really want to try and do more with them in the new year. I feel more nervous today, it's only a breach. We've got a really strong relationship and we've been going out about 11 months now. I'm quite young-minded, I think that's a problem. Um, so I tend to... I should be more... Um, I should knuckle down and... and think first instead of acting first. <laughs> A 
appearing before Warrington magistrates, Lorna Wincott manages to keep Tim out of prison. The magistrates impose more unpaid work for breaching his curfew. First step. Brilliant. I'm really happy. Thank you very much, Lorna. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really great. happy. Bye, right, guys. OK. Have See you later. I'll speak to you later. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. But Tim still has one more court appearance to come in Manchester for smashing a restaurant window. There's been a development in the civil action Junaid Mayot is bringing against West Yorkshire police. The police have um, increased the offer to £12,000 to settle the claim. Uh, the police describe it as a final offer. I think we should be seen to be doing something, um, because then, if it doesn't turn out exactly how we want, at least we can show that we, we made some attempt to um, negotiate at a, a reasonable level. I, I do think you've got to make a sensible offer to, to, you know, if you don't want to do so, then, then that, 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 that's fair enough. My advice to you is do not do that. The counter-offer wants to make £250,000 or the two officers sacked. I think it's ridiculous. I mean, I understand he's, he's upset by what went on, but um, he's got to take the advice of his lawyers. Or, you know, I think to make that sort of offer is, is, um, is, is, is going to be counterproductive. You're old, Jimmy Butler. You always wear. Janet, your dad's nothing but a dirty, rotten, filthy, stinking whoremaster. My mother's name for you. The first words I remember. No wonder I'm a poet. Gerard Butler is a Tucker's client. I am a part-time performance poet. It's something that I do for the love of it. It's something that I do to keep my sort of paws in show business, if you like. Jimmy's a dead-end kid, blistered by the fists of drunks who babysit their sons and daughters, telling bedtime stories of prison hits, page three tits, and the purity of skag. The performance poetry I do isn't work. I will admit to occasionally being paid. I will put my hands up to it, but it's so sporadic and the gigs are so far apart that it's never what I would consider to be an income. It's Laurel Goss from Tucker's Solicitors. I don't know if you'll be able to help. It's regarding Gerard Butler. He's been on benefits for quite a long time, many years actually, and on the basis of sickness. The Benefits Agency found out that he's been doing this work and getting paid for it. He has quite a good case because it's arguable whether this is work or not. I just wanted to get an update. This has been hanging over Mr Butler for a while now. In the last three years, they say that he's earned £14,000 on top of his benefits, which he hasn't declared. So that's enough to make there's a substantial amount of overpayment just on the fact that working and not declaring it. I haven't earned £14,000 in any way, shape or form. Look where I live. I live in a town block in Hume. I don't have any curtains. I don't... Um, I don't have any luxuries or anything. I live quite frugally. This is, I think, the ultimate live art moment. Yes. <laughs> I'm being done for benefit for all, being filmed for that, and I'm on stage <laughs> in a theatre, which I'm not getting paid for. The benefits agency has worked out that Gerard's had £4,000 too much from them, and he's agreed to pay it back. But now he's waiting to hear if he'll also be prosecuted. Tim Eagle has a suspended prison sentence hanging over him. So far, Tuckers have managed to keep him out of jail. 
now he's due to appear before Manchester magistrates charged with taking a bus pass and damaging a restaurant window. He and boyfriend Kieran have come into Tucker's to meet Franklin Sinclair. Hello. Hi, guys. Well, I thought we would never see you again. I know. I, you seem like, not that you're not a nice guy, <laughs> but you seem such a nice guy, and I, I never thought you'd ever get involved with the criminal justice I system know. again. And it was like I said to the court, it was like handbags at dawn, wasn't it, your case? It was. <laughs> <laughs> so, the situation, as I understand it, when it was left, is that the theft is effectively banged to right, yep? You're guilty, aren't you? I think I, you've admitted it, I, haven't you? I admitted it. So, I'm not worried about that. I don't think that's a problem. I'm worried about the criminal damage, because the value I've read on the file <laughs> is £500 to a window, and I'm worried because it's a similar kind of offence. It's you two squabbling again, and then smashing glass after an argument between you two, roughly, isn't it? That's right. I'd like to think I can persuade the magistrate that you're not really the type of person that we no, should be sending to jail. It's a waste of time. You know, although it's a shame that the suspended sentence hasn't worked. I know. It is a shame. And what about you two? How are you two getting on? Oh, yeah, good. Until you get drunk. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. That's the problem, isn't we'll it? Married some time this year, right? Sorry? We're supposed to be getting married some time this year. OK. So. I, I'm a, I, I Marriages don't, don't always work out, Kieran, I can no. tell you that. <laughs> From personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> they seem, uh, if I can say that, the perfect couple. But, uh, obviously, when they've had a few drinks, they start having uh, lovers' tiffs in a dramatic fashion. And, uh, unfortunately, that's all really that gets him into trouble. And uh, I just hope we can keep him out of jail, really. Franklin asks the court to send him on an alcohol course rather than to prison. The magistrates retire to consider their decision. Tim enjoys a moment of freedom. Hopefully they'll see me next time, but a good, good past of my employment, I've never got in trouble. I'm a very positive guy. I like to think that I'm going to be walking out the front door in the next ten minutes. But Tim's luck runs out. We've got six weeks, um, so I've got for three weeks. Um, he's very upset in the summer. I really thought we'd done enough to persuade them, you know? It felt good. It felt like uh, I, I was convincing them. I felt good. But uh, fell on deaf ears. That's my job. And now, to do a police station right away. To turn off now. <laughs> All the best. You too. Cheers. In strictly legal terms, it wasn't a harsh sentence, and he did well. However, I was disappointed because I thought that we gave the court a good opportunity to uh, do something positive to try and keep Tim from reoffending, And six weeks in jail, which will be three weeks in jail, will not keep Tim from reoffending. No agreement has been reached in Junaid Mayotte's action against West Yorkshire Police, so the trial is going ahead. Junaid gets ready for court. I've always been honest, I've been truthful, and my story has never changed. It's okay. It's okay. Honesty has been my driving force, and I'm, I know I will get justice. I've been looking forward to it. This is what I've been waiting for four years. I've been waiting. <laughs> It might have taken four years to get to court, but the case is over before it begins. It turns out that Junaid has been stopped by the police before, and that officer has come forward with a notebook which paints Junaid in an unhelpful light. The notebook entry referred to the fact that uh, Mr Mayot was uh, uncooperative and abusive. If this new evidence um, it was heard by a jury in court, it um, would not have assisted uh, Mr Mayotte's case. I must admit, I wasn't prepared for a, a notebook like that, um, but it, it, it's, it's what happens and, and you know, you, you've got to take it on the chin. It was a disappointment to receive that notebook entry. The case is settled out of court in Junaid's favour. 
West Yorkshire police don't accept liability, but they agree to pay him £12,000 and his legal costs. It's not what he wanted, though. I still feel like, you know, obviously, we've, I feel like I've won, but... And I have won. Obviously, I wasn't best pleased. But I had to take advice from counsel, and uh, I followed their advice, to be fair. Uh, had it been, my, been in my hands, I would have still gone, gone all the way. It's good news in rural Oldham. The investigation into Nellie Garrity's death takes a surprising turn. The police drop Stephen and the other boy from their inquiries. His parents break the news to him that his case is NFA. No further action. NFA. Oh, good. Good. All over. Good. Is that it? Good. Is that it? <laughs> What's it happen? Um. Good. Nightmare's over. Yeah, yeah man. Well, I'm clear. Three months of living hell. And you. Yeah, man. Well. Oh. oh. I'm crying again. The <laughs> second time I've cried today now. Why was the first? When Michelle told me. All oh, right. Like Nelly's family. Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. feel really, really sorry for them. When they were searching for the bag, I'd have loved to have been there and help them look for the bag. But I couldn't because my son were involved in it. And it's a case of, I feel so sorry for that poor family of what they're going through, but my son didn't do it. A 37-year-old man has since been tried and found guilty of the murder of Nellie Geraghty. It's just really pleasing for me because I felt that these boys had been arrested in a hasty way. At the end of the day, you feel for these people, you know, especially young young people, personally for me, um, and, mo and mums, you know, I'm a mum myself, so I, I can't imagine what it would feel like myself to know that my son hadn't done something. Three weeks after his conviction, Tim Eagle is released from Strangeways Prison. It was terrible experience. It's not a recommended place to go. I was on one of the roughest wings in the prison, so it was, uh, it, it, was it was just, I wouldn't say hell, it was worse than hell. We only had seven channels on the telly, which was not good. <laughs> so I'm a, a quiz master now. I've watched so much quizzes and uh, property programmes. <laughs> I can build a house from scratch, though. Boyfriend Kieran turns up. You're pale. I know. Don't see much sun in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to take some breakfast, take him to some bed, get his hair cut, and we might just go to the casino, because you've not been there for a while, though, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Poet Gerard Butler has heard from the Benefits Agency. He's to be prosecuted for fraud. Solicitor Caroline Wilbraham will represent him in court. If we do enter our guilty plea, the prosecution then stand up and essentially read out the, the facts of the case, what the overpayments are, what the period of overpayment is. It would then be my turn to put forward what you have to say and hand up the letters with regard to your ill health. Gerard accepts that he got money for performing, but says he also had to pay other artists out of it. Yes, you have had various payments, various grants, but uh, some of the grants have been money that you've paid to other performers yeah, yeah, with regard yeah, yeah. to um, stage plays and things Most like that that you've been putting on. Yes. I know this might sound a little trite, but I'm, you know, I'm not a banker. I'm, I'm some two-bit alcoholic Trump <laughs> poet who just did this little thing, you know, and it just seems a little, a little much. On the morning of his court case, Gerard has decided how to plead. I'm going to plead guilty, 
all I want is this to be over with. It's all I've ever wanted. And what I want to do is lie down on my couch and eat soup and talk to my friends about old times. That's all I want to do, because that's what gets you better. Being dragged through court doesn't get you better. It makes you worse. The court imposes a six-month community order on Gerard. He has also fined £250 and tagged for four weeks. The trial of Will Jenkins, charged with burglary during the Manchester riots, is about to start. The former soldier is feeling far from brave. I'll be candid with you. Crap, innit? It's not an environment I'm used to. I'm not in my comfort zone. Hopefully, I've been just train myself as best I can. The jury watches the CCTV and is asked to decide if he intended to burgle the shop or not. After five hours and 16 minutes, they are unable to reach a verdict. It's wasted my time, the jury's time, taxpayers' money, prosecuting for nothing, for standing in the shop having a cig. It's outrageous. I'm annoyed. I am. I'm annoyed but happy, if that makes sense. I don't know. Seven weeks later, Will Jenkins is acquitted at a retrial. He's a free man.